Good afternoon, fellow modelers. Back again with another episode of Handy Reviews. I'm Mr. Handy. Uh, today we're going to take a peek at Mushroom Model Publications Yellow Series on the Republic F105 Thunder Chief. Now I have to say, uh, this company is... Uh, pretty amazing. Um, their yellow series, I think, is probably one of the best modeling um, publications uh, around. They uh, have done a lot, but they are so difficult to find and so difficult to get. Um, they just changed... Uh, their format. They've turned them into these much bigger books. Uh, their uh, yellow series was much smaller. I think it was probably uh, it was half the size and it was three quarters of this size. So it was like just a little pocket book type thing. Um, they've changed their size. It's much bigger. Um, there's uh, quite a bit of information in here. Uh, the unfortunate thing, it's kind of... Uh, hit and miss on some of them um and i will as we're going through i will tell you why it's a hit and miss so let's just get into it so this is about the old thunder chief um as we see there's lots of here's your table of contents so um here we have our acknowledgements birth the f105 uh, first production versions, the ultimate versions, Wild Weasels, Operational Service, Combat over Vietnam, Technical Description, which gets into all the different bits of the uh, aircraft. Uh, we actually have a Colors and Markings section. Uh, but before you start going yoo -hoo, let's take a peek. Because as much as it says that, it's a little bit misleading. So... Uh, you got your acknowledgments, and then we get into our introduction into the F-105. Uh, very illustrated. Uh, plenty of information. Wonderful line art. More line art. Nice pictures. Uh, chapter 2 is your uh, production, uh, the F-105B. Uh, some nice pictures of the equipment that's involved, uh, weapons, production line, your test pilots, arming, more line drawings. Uh, then we get into chapter 3 of the F-105 D and F. Delta was the single seat, the Foxtrot was the two seat, uh, which was ultimately... Um, Converted over to uh, the Wild Weasel versions uh, as the D continued to be the bomber. Uh, there's your original Vietnam colors. More line art. We get into the Wild Weasel and other special versions. All your info, nice pictures again. Lots of line art and uh, nose art. Again, information. There's your offices uh, for the Wild Weasel. The front and the back. Uh, operational service. So basically it talks about uh, further use of the F-105. As you see, it was used by the Thunderbirds. It was also used in Air National Guard service. section on the Thunderbirds. There's your section on Vietnam. Arming. Lots of wonderful pictures. Lots and lots of wonderful pictures. Both black and white in color. Uh, nice glossy pages as well. Now we get into the chapter about 
Vietnam. Sorry for your pause. I thought I stopped recording. So we get into the actual Vietnam section. It talks about all the history of the F-105 in Vietnam. Uh, missions. Make encounters. The attack on the Paul Dalmier Bridge. And as you can see, the Vietnam section is pretty long. Uh, they talk about the wild weasels as well. And then we get into, again, some more line views. Or line, dra line drawings. Again, some of the wonderful nose art. More line drawings. More line drawings. More line drawings. More information on Vietnam. More information on Vietnam. And as I said, it, it covers a lot. Like, there's a lot on Vietnam. And, I mean, rightfully so. It was used during the Vietnam War. It was the basic bomber truck of the Vietnam War. So, uh, we get into the uh, meat and gravy, or the meat and potatoes of the book. Which is the technical description. Now, ultimately, when I'm judging books, uh, I, this is what I'm looking for. As a modeler, this is what I'm looking for. Yes, pictures are great and wonderful, but when I, I want line drawings, I want inside detail, I want as much detail as I could possibly get uh, for when I'm building, right? So, this is where this one kind of... I don't know. I don't know whether it's good or whether it's bad. We'll just go into it and I'll talk about it at the end. So, uh, technical description. There's your uh, parts. There's your um, uh, cutaway view of the F-105. Uh, here we get into um, just technical description. Uh, there's your instrument panel. Lots of numbers. There's all your what the bits are. Um, here we see it appears to be the arresting hook and here's the panel that had to deal with the arresting hook and then we get into a service diagram which is all the different spots that are, are open up on the fuselage and more and more and then we have a bit of a walk around I was lucky enough to see uh, one or two of these at Pima a couple years ago. Uh, there was an F-105G there. And uh, that was interesting to see. Big plane. Very big plane. Uh, again, there's your details stuff. Basically, again, it's a walk around the fuselage. Uh, here you get to see your detail of the wing, or the uh, the main landing gear wells. Uh, here's some uh, stuff on your flight control panels. It shows you in the uh, cockpit display here, or the cockpit drawing here, where these bits are. So, uh, and and it that's the thing is that as we go through, there are those. It just kind of shows you where these panels are on the actual actual instrument panels are on the consoles so there's our the engine for the f-105 uh starting of the f-105 and the equipment um the specs on fuel uh there's a cockpit picture the and another cockpit picture again the the issue that i have is that this this is nice but I don't see the consoles I'd like to see the consoles and this is where this this book actually um, this one here in particular kind of uh, doesn't fulfill the actual yellow series uh, of some of the other ones 
because there's, I mean, most of the yellow series that I've seen, just detail upon detail upon detail upon detail. There's everything you could want. There's drawings of the, the cockpit and, but this one is just kind of, it's a little bit, it's a little lackluster when it comes to that. Uh, ejection seat, which is actually kind of nice. Now we get into the consoles. But there are these small little pictures, right? And apparently they were taken from uh, the Osprey, Vietnam War. So this here is taken from... Uh, it was taken from the uh, Thunder Chief units uh, of the Vietnam War. I, I guess this is, you know, fairly good. But usually in, in the other ones, it was the whole page, right? So, and it gets even worse because then we start getting into, so this is nice. But we've seen that a couple times already. Here's your flight system. There, they, this is more of what we're used to seeing, but it's not as clear. Like, it's really marred, unfortunately. So, uh, but here, this is what I'm talking about, is we have this small little thing and... It, you might not be able to see it from here, but it's really hard to read some of the small print. But it's also really hard to see on here, you know, what the detail of it. And I guess, you know, that's my, that's an issue for me, I guess. But uh, if this had been done earlier, like I said, this would be as a display on here, all big like this. And they would have all the parts and it would be numbered down the side and... So, unfortunately, they just took the pictures right out of the technical manual of the F-105. So, same thing here for your uh, front side panels. And then we get into the different parts here. So, there's where all these different uh, indicators, warning, and caution lights. So, you can see them where they all are in the cockpit. Same thing with this one here in the rear. And then we get into the actual uh, instruments and where they are. So... And then they start talking about the panels. So this was the other thing I was trying to, or I was mentioning before, is that you, you get this picture of the panel, and it shows you here, you know. And I guess in that way, it's maybe a little even more detailed, uh, so that you can actually see the actual knobs and everything. So, you know, I guess that kind of makes up for it, <laughs> but it doesn't do the whole. You know, I don't think it does the whole consoles. So, um, nice detail of the uh, the radar. Uh, some more detail of the radar. Uh, and then we get into some more of the, the console stuff again. Uh, there's a whole section here on your uh, site reticle display. And then, again, more instrumentation. Uh, more instr instrumentation, uh, along with the uh, uh, tier launch or the tier triple ejector rack, and then you have these supplementals, which basically talks about um, what can be carried, uh, maximum sport capabilities, uh, and what can be carried on each one of the hard points. So. And then we get into, you know, some of the weapons that were actually carried. Some nice pictures again of these uh, weapon loadouts. And these used to really be a big thing uh, back in the 80s, 70s and 80s, where you'd have this, you'd see in the old publications of, uh, of uh, uh, magazines and that, you'd have your aircraft and all the, the loadout of all the different weapons it could carry. Nice uh, pictures of the uh, 20 millimeter cannon used by the, the Thunder Chief. Uh, there's the uh, typical bomb load for Vietnam with the daisy cutters. And the Mark 82, or not Mark 82s, the uh, 750 pound bombs. Um, here is a uh, jamming pod. Uh, the double uh, Sidewinder ra a rack, which was used for a little bit and then got rid of because it rattled quite a bit and created a lot of disturbance. And then 
for those that were thinking, you know, there's going to be a great color section, uh, Chapter 8, F-105 paint schemes and markings. There's your paint chips of the camouflage colors that were used. And it goes into explanation of the different colors. And then that's it. So that was a bit of a letdown as well, unfortunately. Uh, we get into specs for the F-105A. We get into specs of F-105B units, F-105D and G units. And as you see, it continues on. Uh, here's the tail codes for F-105, uh, uh, the different F-105 units uh, and where they were uh, in the States as well as uh, in Vietnam and Cambodia. And... Uh, here's your production run table with the serial numbers. So, and then your social media for uh, for uh, MMP. So, ultimately, I mean, yes, it is a good, I guess, if you take a look at it from the point of view that it goes into even more detail. Uh, it, it, it's, I mean, it's, this is definitely worth uh, the money. Um, it's definitely worth its weight in gold. Um, the only thing again that was lacking in this is there are no skill drawings. There's lots of line, but there's no skill drawings. And the yellow series is known for skill drawings. I mean, that was, you know, all their skill drawings are, are in there. And unfortunately there's not one skill drawing in here. And I don't know whether that was a conscious effort on their part. Because now they go and they sell the plans, the skill drawings, for a separate amount. Um, but, yeah, I mean, why would you leave it out? I mean, that, again, would be the finishing touch on, on this. And, of course, a little bit more information on the color schemes on the F-105. Um, because uh, you've got the Vietnam color scheme, which seems to be the, the scheme for TAC aircraft from uh, uh, 60, uh, we'll say 67 to the eight, you know, mid to late 80s. I mean, the F-111 carried it uh, right till almost the end. So, um, but there's other schemes. I mean, uh, there was a totally opposite scheme of this uh, when they messed up on the, the painting, the the, the gray was actually replaced with green. So the dark green was actually, they, they mixed up the two tones. You can see it in some uh, some of the Vietnam books uh, that uh, you'll have uh, an F-111 that's got green where the brown is and it's uh, brown where the green was supposed to be. So, But there's also uh, some of the wraparounds. Um, there was uh, some test colors that were done at Hill Air Force Base, I believe. On the F-105, they tested a desert scheme. Uh, they tested uh, another scheme uh, as well. I can't remember what the colors were, but I know that there was a desert scheme. It was uh, it was called uh, Peanut Scheme or something along those lines. And uh, those uh, were actually done in a deco set by two bobs. So, it, like I said, they, they could have gone a little more, uh, but definitely the scale... Scale drawings is missed in this, and that's unfortunate. So, anyways, enough of my rambling. Uh, that's what you get. Um, this one I got on eBay because I thought it was no longer available. Again, like I said, a lot of these, uh, they come and they go. Uh, if you go to the MMP site, uh, sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. Uh, the Zero One was like that. I thought the Zero One was out of print. And then, like a week later, they had a bunch of them in stock. Um, it's the same thing with this. This was out of print. Uh, I got this one on eBay. And then within days, it came back into print on MMP, of course. So uh, I think I paid $25 for this one, uh, Canadian, on, on eBay, which is really, really good. Um, but... Uh, yeah, you, you kind of have to be fast with the MMP stuff because they come in and then they disappear real quick. So, uh, yeah, that's it.
for this uh, review. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, let me know if I'm wrong, uh, whether I was rambling or everything, or whether I was expecting a little too much. Um, other than that, uh, happy modeling. Thanks for watching Handy Reviews, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.